Let's take a look at division of functions and how zero is effective. Now, if my numerator, if it happens to equal zero, then the whole function is zero. Zero over two is zero. If my denominator equals zero, then it's undefined because you can't take two and divide it by zero. Fine. But if both the numerator and denominator are zero at the same time, you know, if they both equal zero, then what we have x is indeterminate. Take a look at how we can use this. So I have an equation here. Uh, it's already been factored. Always factor your equation before you try to figure out, uh, do much work with it. We are going to find out where this equation would equal zero, where it would be undefined, and where it would be indeterminate. So I'm going to start with my numerator. And I'm going to take each of those pieces, the x plus 3 and the x minus 2, and I'm going to find out where it is going to be, a, where those pieces equal zero. Remember, you always have to factor first, because if you have a bunch of squares or cubes or anything like that, this is very hard to do. So, let's start with x plus 3 equals zero. It equals zero when x is minus 3. And the other one, x minus 2 that equals zero when x equals two. If I move on and do the denominator, well, I've got x minus two again. That's not going to be any different. x is going to be equal, that part is going to be zero, zero when x equals two. And this x plus one, that's going to equal zero when x equals minus 1. All right, so let's take these and look at when it's going to be... We'll start with 0. When is it going to be 0? Well, in order for this whole function to be 0, the numerator is going to be 0. It, the numerator will be 0 whenever x plus 3 equals 0. So it's going to be 0 at x equals minus 3. And whenever x, okay, it's going to be 0 whenever x equals minus 3. Now, I know x minus 2 also will give you 0, but there's also 1 on the bottom, so we're saving that one for later. It's going to be undefined it's going to be undefined whenever the bottom equals 0, and only the bottom. So I look at my denominator. Okay, I've got a 0 when x equals, minus, equals 2, so that's going to be the same on the top. So I look for a number that's only on the bottom. The denominator, when x equals minus 1, that whole equation is going to be undefined. And the last one, when we call it indeterminate, Anytime both the top and bottom are zero at the same time, then it's considered indeterminate. Now, if I look at it, those two are the same, these two right here. So it's going to be indeterminate anytime x equals two. And that is the basic answer we're looking for. I mean, another simple way to look at it, zero, you look for pieces on the top that aren't repeated on the bottom, and anytime any of those pieces are going to be zero, the whole function is zero. Undefined, you look for parts on the bottom that are not repeated on the top. Anytime you've got one of those parts equals zero, like this x plus one, 
the bottom is un the whole equation is undefined. And any time you've got parts that are on both the bottom and the top, x is, the function is going to be indeterminate any time x equals one of the, the uh, any time one of those parts equals zero. And that's how you tell whether where a function can be zero, undefined, or indeterminate.